Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm the developer of Spoolstock. So Spoolstock is an app that was designed to help you keep track of your 3D printing filament uh, as, an, as an inventory tool as well as your prints and materials and a whole lot more. Uh, I created this app because I needed to find a better way to keep track of my filament and I just couldn't find one in the market that I felt like really fit my needs. Uh, so I feel like you will find that this tool is fully functional. Uh, there's a lot of features that have been added based on feedback from the community. And uh, it's just really exciting to share with everybody. So uh, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be going through the basics of how to use Spoolstock and talk a little bit about what we're hoping to accomplish in the future. So when we first open the app, you'll see we're presented with a screen here with something that we call a smart code. Um, your smart code is the only identifier that we use to keep track of your 3D printing uh, prints, your inventory, uh, filaments, brands, colors, labels. Uh, all of your data is associated with this smart code. And the reason we chose to use a smart code instead of using a more traditional login method is because we didn't want to collect any user data, right? The goal of this app really is to create a useful tool uh, for the 3D printing community. And we wanted to make it really easy for you to manage your workshop or your school from as many devices as you want. Um, so all the data in Spoolstock is synced to the cloud. And as you enter, uh, as long as you enter the same smart code, you can see the same data shared across multiple devices. So it's a perfect setup for schools or businesses uh, where multiple people are accessing your inventory on a regular basis. So I'm gonna tap next here and uh, while we expect smart codes to be sort of the way of the future, uh, that may change, but as of right now, we think it's a really great way to get started. Uh, so speaking of get started, from here, um, we have two options. We can either tap get started or you see our little mail icon here. That mail icon will give me the ability to email my smart code to whoever I like. So uh, it's a really good way to keep track of your smart code because like I said, it's the only way we identify you. So keep track of that and make sure you have it handy in case you get a new device. So we're gonna tap get started now and that's gonna register our device and give us access to all of the tools we need. So along the bottom, you'll see uh, we have four primary tabs. So our inventory, that's our spool inventory, prints, materials, and stats. Um, and we'll go through the creation of each of these. Right now there's no data in here. Um, and I'll also show you some of the menu functions. So we have our profile, we can create custom brands, we can print labels directly from the app, keep track of spools that have been used. Um, we do keep track of empty spool information as well. So as we go through and create new spools, if you'd like to reduce uh, the weight, so if you wanna weigh your spool and then track the weight, uh, you can reduce the empty spool weight. So we allow you to keep track of that as well as pre-populating some information. Um, if you'd like to provide feedback, you can submit it right from here. And then smart code, that gives you the ability to change your smart code if you like. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's create uh, a new inventory item. So from here, you'll see we have the ability to select a filament. Uh, and right now we haven't created any filaments. So let's create a new filament. And you'll see we have a bunch of brands pre-populated here. Um, if you'd like to add your own brands, you can do that as well. So if I tap on new, you can create a new brand, upload it, your own logo, but we'll use a brand that's already in here. So let's say we're going to create a new filament for eSun, um, and then let's select our material. Again, you can create your own materials if these don't meet your needs. Um, but let's say we're going to use eSun PLA, uh, and this PLA, let's say it's a, you know, it's a, a gray color. Um, from here, we can select from a variety of different colors, and this color is going to represent, uh, you know, just as a visual indicator, what color the spool is. So I'm going to use just gray that we have here. And from here, we can add attributes. So if this was a specialty filament uh, or anything that you wanted to keep track of specific attributes, you can do that from here. Um, and you see, you'll see we have a bunch in here, but if you wanted to add your own, you could also type your own in here. And uh, those will be pre-populated in the future with future spools. So let's say this is a uh, matte filament and you can select multiple if you'd like. Um, you can take an image of the spool if you'd like to, or save any notes. So I'm going to save, and this is, we're creating our filament here. And here, now we're now that we've created our filament, eSun PLA gray, matte, um, 
Now we can have uh, some additional information on the spool itself. So uh, we have the ability to select a currency. By default, USD is selected, but you can actually change that in your profile if you'd like to pre-select uh, or set a default currency that fits your needs better. Let's say this uh, spool costs us $20. You can upload a purchase source. Uh, so if you wanted to you know, add an Amazon link or somewhere else you purchased the, the spool from, one, it's great for record keeping, and two, the app will alert you when the spool is running low. And if you'd like, you can, uh, you can just reorder directly from the app. Um, and then some weight information. So in this case, we'll assume that this is a brand new spool. Uh, you have the option to uh, I've got some pre-selected sizes here. You can add, you you can use those, or you can add your own if you'd prefer. Um, and then let's say this wasn't a complete spool, right? So the spool size is one kilogram, um, but if I wanted to weigh this spool, I could weigh it on a scale and put that current weight in. And then from there, I have the ability to remove empty spool weight. So if we wanted to do that, I can say yes, and you'll see we have a list of all of our empty spool weights. Uh, many of the brands are represented here. Um, and this list will continue to grow as the com community contributes additional information. But let's say this was eSun, it's a clear plastic. Uh, it automatically knows the spool weight is 224 grams. Um, so you'll see our current weight is 1,000 minus 224, remaining weight is 776. So if this was a, uh, you know, you measured this and it was 800 grams, it would subtract that for you. So in this case, we're going to say, no, this is actually a brand new spool, so no problem. Um, it does automatically generate a QR code for you for that item. So if you'd like to print labels, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And then you can also specify inventory locations. These inventory locations are completely customizable and up to you. I have uh, numbered bins in my office, so I can just type in you know, the number four or whatever you like. And now I know that that spool is in inventory location four, which is really convenient because if I want to search for gray PLA, it'll show me all of the gray PLAs I have, and then I can find it. It's inventory location four. So I can take a, a picture of the spool here. Um, and then down the road, as you're using this spool more often, this filament more often, you'll notice there's a print success rate here, um, and it'll keep track of your prints as you keep track of your prints. Uh, it will actually allow you to uh, keep track of your print success rate. So we'll get to know what filaments are doing really well for us and what filaments we feel like there's an opportunity uh, to maybe change up because we're not seeing high success rates. Um, I am going to actually change our current weight. I'm going to say there's 820 grams left on here, and we're going to remove empty spool weight and save. So uh, I just wanted to show that now you'll see a chart here that shows your remaining filament as well as the filament that has been used. So that's great. You can also duplicate spools from here and here's all of your spool information right at hand. So if we go back into our inventory list, there's our eSun PLA. You can add as much as you like. Now let's say we wanted to create a print. Um, let's go ahead and hit plus to create a new print. And we'll say this print is called uh, hat stand. You can add an additional description. So uh, let's say this was, you know, four walls. You can add that. You can add a print duration, right? So if we had, let's say this took, you know, two hours to print, just do print. Mark it as print success or print failure. You could link to the file. You can take an image of it. And then, and then from here, you select what spools you use to print. So spool stock totally supports multi-filament, multi-color printing. So you, in this case, we only have one spool. Uh, you'll see you can scan the spool. So if you've printed labels, you can just scan the spool you used. In this case, we only have one spool. So I'm just going to select eSun PLA. And then we enter in our used filament. So in this case, we'll say this was... 100 grams of used filament, and there we go. So our spools used for this print, hit save, and now we have some details on our print. Uh, if we had taken a photo, that image would show up on the top, gives a, a really nice look, and you'll see the spools used. If we tap on that eSun PLA, now there's a new column here that says filament used during prints, 100 grams. So now our total remaining weight has been updated to indicate uh, 
how much filament is currently remaining on the spool. So the goal here is if you have a print and you wonder if you have enough filament to complete that print, you can always check in here and see as close to possible or as close to exact as possible how much filament you have remaining on the spool. Okay. Um, so materials, right? So we saw that material selector screen. If you want more information about the materials, we do have those located here. You have the ability to add whatever material materials you like, as well as complete these fields. Um, and again, all of your inventory, your prints, your materials, all of that content is available only to you. Uh, in the future, we do intend to creating a more community driven database that allows uh, for people to contribute um, maybe different filaments or different materials to the community. Um, and we'll go through a review process to allow those on the platform. Um, but that's as of today, all of that information is completely private to you and will always remain private unless you specifically give permission to make it public. Um, from here, you'll see we have some new stats, right? So we have our total active spools, how much filament we have left. What's neat about this is if you had, you know, 150 spools, it'll tell you, tell you the total grams of filament that you have available. Um, we only have one filament brand today. That's eSun, PLA, and then it's in the black category of colors. Um, and that's customizable as well. Uh, so let's say we wanted to print a label here. I could go in here and tap on print labels and we're gonna create labels. So in this case, we're gonna print labels for our eSun PLA and then select our label size. So uh, if you have a label printer, we have these pre-configured sizes. Uh, if you have specific sizes you're looking for, feel free to submit that feedback and we'll do our best to add those templates. Um, or you can print an Avery 5160 sheet. So if you wanted to print a whole sheet of labels for all of your uh, filaments, you can do that as well. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and we'll do a one and an eighth by two and a quarter inch label. So from here, what's happening is in the background, a PDF is being generated with that specific label. Once that PDF is available to us, uh, we'll see a PDF icon show up here just like that. And if I tap on that, there's my label. So from here, this is just a standard PDF. You can email this to yourself, you can open in your browser, you can print it however you like. And we've got some useful information here. Uh, and so we have our inventory location, we have the brand, the material, all of that, and then the QR code that was generated so you can just easily scan the labels. And those labels are always available for you to return to. So if I go back into print labels, you'll see I have create labels and view labels here. If I tap on view labels, there's all the labels that I have stored. So all of those labels will be saved for you. Uh, so you can always go back and review them. Um, if you'd like to change out brands or anything outside of the, just the spool creation process, um, you'll find that in our brand section in the menu here. If you'd like to add additional brands, you can do that here. Uh, but that's basic functionality. You know, we're expecting um, to add additional features in the future. Uh, we know that a lot of this feels manual today. Uh, we would love to have slicer integration for prints uh, or the ability to uh, import G-code to automate some of these processes. Um, as of right now, there's, there's such a wide variety of different slicers and integrations that are allowed um, that we're still building a strategy for what that looks like, but we have every intention of doing our best to automate that. Um, but as of right now, I, I've heard a ton of great feedback from the community. It feels like a really great, uh, easy to use tool and you know, hopefully it'll continue to get better and better. So if you have any feedback, feel free to submit that right in the app. Uh, you can create your own and that feedback will be tracked. Um, you'll notice I do have the ability when creating feedback to email yourself, uh, to, to a store email along with your feedback. And that way, anytime I or another developer make changes um, based on your feedback, we add your feedback to a queue, if it's a bug or if it's a feature request, um, and you'll be contacted to let you know sort of what the status is as the status changes. So again, we really want Spoolstock to be community driven and the more we can make this app fit into people's workflows, the more successful I feel like we are. Um, and then finally, just the, your profile here on the top will show you sort of everything that you've done in the app, right? So 
as of right now, I haven't set a default currency, so it's going to use USD. Um, but if you wanted to use euros, you could select euros and then euros will, will pre-populate when you create a new spool. Uh, I'm going to say USD is probably what I'm going to want going forward. Um, and then you also have the ability to save an email address if you'd like. The only reason for that is that gives us the ability uh, to provide you with your smart code in case it goes uh, lost or missing. So um, feel free to enter one there. Um, but you'll see we have my filaments, my spools. Uh, feedback, materials, prints, colors. So everything that you generate in the app falls into your profile. So you can always go back at one glance and see it all together. So again, this has been a brief demonstration of Spoolstock. I hope the app is useful to you. And if you have any feedback or questions, feel free to leave a comment or uh, add it directly in the app. So uh, Spoolstock is available today on iOS and Android. Um, and if the question is out there for you, yes, we're absolutely working on a web version of this. We know that many people's workflows start on the computer, uh, so that's a goal. We're probably looking at a few months before we have something that's ready for release, but uh, it's on our radar, and we hope very much that we'll have that available to our users soon. So thanks for spending some time with me today, and uh, enjoy.